ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टुडे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्री चैतन्य चरितामृत वी बिन रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैप्टर फोर ऑफ द मधिलीला एंड वी विल स्टार्ट अ रीडिंग फ्रॉम वर्स नंबर वन हंड्रेड इलेवन मुखम करोति वाचारण पंगुम लंघय ते गिर यद कृपा तमम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन ईश्वरम हरि ओम तत्सानी मंत्र लैला यतन करीना चलिला दक्षिण पुरी तांड्रे दीक्षा दीन अद्वैताचार्य बेग टू बी इनिशिएटेड बाय माधवेंद्र पुरी आफ्टर इनिशिएटिंग हिम माधवेंद्र पुरी स्टार्टेड फॉर साउथ इंडिया पर्पड बाय हिज डिवाइन प्लेस ए सी भक्त प्रधान शिला प्रभुपाद की जय इन दिस कनेक्शन शिला भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर कमेंट्स दैट अद्वैताचार्य टुक इनिशिएशन फ्रॉम माधवेंद्र पुरी हु वॉज अ सन्यासी इन द डिसिप्लिन सक्सेशन ऑफ द मधवा संप्रदाय अकॉर्डिंग टू चैतन्य महाप्रभु किबा विप्र किबा न्यासी शूद्र कहने नया ये कृष्ण तत्व वेता से गुरु हया so we got to remember this that it was madhava madhava sampradaya not madhava like sometimes it said so this verse which mahaprabhu said means a person may be brahman a sanyasi a shudra or whatever but if he is well conversant in the science of krishna he can become a guru this is from chaitanya charitamrit madhya leela chapter 8 verse 1 to 8 which will which will come later on This statement is supported by Sri Madhavendra Puri according to Pancharatra injunction only a householder brahmana can initiate others cannot when a person is initiated it is assumed that he has become a brahmana in other words unless one is a brahmana he cannot make another a brahmana a grihastha brahmana agrihastha brahmana partaking of the varnashram dharma institution can secure various types of paraphernalia to worship lord vishnu to worship lord vishnu so i just realized that my battery is running a bit low so i'm trying to plug the charge as well at the same time so please bear with me all sorted so we were reading that uh, when a person is initiated it is assumed that he has become a brahmana without being initiated by a proper brahman one cannot be converted into a brahman in other words unless one is a brahman he cannot make another a brahmana A grihastha Brahman partaking of the Varnashram Dharma Institution can secure various types of paraphernalia to worship Lord Vishnu through his honest labor. Actually, people beg to be initiated by these householder Brahmanas just to become in, successful in the Varnashram Institution or to become free from material desires. It is therefore necessary necessary for a spiritual master in the grihastha ashram to be a strict vaishnav a spiritual master from the sanyas order has very little opportunity to perform archana deity worship but when one accepts a spiritual master from the transcendental sanyasis the principle of deity worship is not at all neglected to implement this conclusion shri chaitanya mahaprabhu gave us his opinion in the verse kiba vipra kiba nyasi etc this indicates that the lord understood the weakness of society in its maintaining that only a grihastha brahman should be a spiritual master shri chaitanya mahaprabhu indicated that it does not matter whether the spiritual master is a grihastha that is a householder a sanyasi or even a shudra a spiritual master simply must be conversant in the essence of the shastra he must understand the supreme personality of godhead only then one can become a spiritual master diksha actually means initiating a disciple 
with transcendental knowledge by which he becomes freed from material contamination. So I would like to read this once again. The meaning of Diksha has been clearly given. It means initiating a disciple with transcendental knowledge by which he becomes freed from material contamination. So that is the first step. Verse number 112. Remunate kaila gopinath darshana tanra rupa dekhina haila vival mana. Going into South India, Shri Madhavendra Puri visited Remuna, where Gopinath is situated. Upon seeing the beauty of the deity, Madhavendra Puri was overwhelmed. Verse number 113. Ritya Gita Kari Jag Mohane Vasila Kya Kya Bhog Lage Brahmane Puchila. Puchila is inquired, like we say in Hindi, Pucha, Puchle. Sim similarly in Bengali, Puchila. Translation in the corridor of the temple from which people generally viewed the deity, Madhavendra Puri chanted and danced. Then he sat down there and asked a Brahman what kinds of food they offered to the deity. Verse number 114. Sevar Soshtava Deki Anandita Mane Uttam Bhoga Lage Eta Buji Anumane. Eta means thus. From the excellence of the arrangements, Madhavendra Puri understood by the deduction that only the best food was offered. Verse number 115. Yaiche Iha Bhoga Lage Sakala I Puchiba Taiche Bhyane Bhoga Gopale Lagaiba. Madhavendra Puri thought, I shall inquire from the priest what foods are offered to Gopinath so that by making arrangements in our kitchen, we can offer similar foods to Shri Gopal. Verse 116. Aila ki puchile na brahmanere sthane brahmana kaila sababhoga vivarne. When the Brahman priest was questioned about this matter, he explained in details what kinds of foods were offered to the deity of Gopinath. Verse 117. Sandhyaya bhoga lage kshira amrita keli nama dvadasya mrita patre bhari amrita saman. The Brahman priest said, in the evening the deity is offered sweet rice in 12 earthen pots. Because the taste is as good as nectar, which is amrit, it is named amrit keli. Verse 118. Gopinathera kshira bali prasiddha nama yara. Prithivete Aiche Bhoga Kaha Nahi Ar. This sweet rice is celebrated, rice is celebrated throughout the world as Gopinath Kshira. It is not offered anywhere else in the world. So the sweet rice is the most favoured item of Gopinath. It is offered in the uh, 12 earthen pots, as was told in the earlier verse. Now verse number 119. Hena kale se bhoga thakure lagila shuni puri gosani kichu mane vicharila. While Madhavendra Puri was talking with the Brahman priest, the sweet rice was placed before the deity as an offering. Hearing this, Madhavendra Puri thought as follows. Verse 120. Ayachita kshira prasada alpa yadi pai swad jani taiche kshira gopale lagai. If without my asking a little sweet rice is given to me, I can then taste it and make a similar preparation to offer my Lord Gopal. Verse 1 to 1. E ichaya lajja panam vishnu smarana kaila hena kale bhoga sari arati bajila. Madhavendra Puri became greatly ashamed when he desired to taste the sweet rice and immediately began to think of Lord Vishnu. While he was thus thinking of Lord Vishnu, the offering was completed and the Arati ceremony began. Verse 1 to 2. Arati Dekhiya Puri Kaila Namaskar. Bahire Aila Kare Kichu Na Kaila Ar. After the Arati was finished, Madhavendra Puri offered his obeisances to the deity and then left the temple. He did not say anything more to anyone. 
वर्ष वन टू थ्री अयाचित वृत्ति पूरी विरक्त उदास अयाचित पहले खाना नहे उपवास Madhavendra Puri avoided begging. He was completely unattached and indifferent to material things. If without his begging, someone offered him some food, he would eat. Otherwise, he would fast. Purport: This is the Paramahansa stage, the highest stage for a sannyasi. A sannyasi can beg from door to door just to collect food, but a Paramahansa who has just taken ayachita vritti or aj ajagra vritti. Does not ask anyone for food. If someone offers him vol food voluntarily, he eats. Ayachita vritti means being accustomed to refrain from begging, and achagara vritti indicates one who is compared to a python. Ajagar, like we say in Hindi, the big snake that makes no effort to acquire food but rather swallows, allows food to come automatically within within its mouth. In other words. A paramahan simply engages exclusively in the service of the Lord without caring even for eating or sleeping. It was stated about the six Goswamis, Nidra, Hara, Vihara, Kadi, Vijito. In the paramahansa stage, one conquers the desire for sleep, food, and sense gratification. One remains a humble, meek, mendicant, engaged in the service of the Lord day and night. Madhavendra Puri had attained this Paramhansa stage. Verse 1 to 4 Prema Mrite Tripta Kshudha Trishna Nahi Badhe Kshira Icha Haila Tahe Mane Aparate. A Paramhansa like Madhavendra Puri is always satisfied in the loving service of the Lord. Material hunger and thirst cannot impede his activities. When he desires desire to take taste a little sweet rice offered to the deity he considered that he had committed an offense by desiring to eat what was being offered to the deity purport it is advised that food being offered to the deity be covered when taken from the kitchen to the deity room in that way others may not see it those who are not accustomed to following the advanced regulated devotional principles may desire to eat the food and that is an offense therefore no one should be given a chance to even see However, when it is brought before the deity, it must be uncovered. Seeing the food uncovered before the deity, Madhavendra Puri desired to taste little of it so that he could prepare a similar sweet rice for his Gopal. Madhavendra Puri was so strict, however, that he considered this to be an offense. Consequently, he left the temple without saying anything to anyone. The Paramhamsa is therefore called Vijita Sadguna Shadguna. He must conquer the six material qualities. So he has to. Vijita, vijita means conquer. Shadguna is the six qualities. The six qualities, material qualities are Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Matsarya and Kshudha, Trishna. Matsarya and Kshudha, Trishna. In, in English, Kama is lust. Krodha is anger. Lobha is greed. Moha is illusion, Matsarya, Matsarya is enviousness, Kshudha and Trishna is hunger and thirst. Verse 125 Gramera Shunya Hate Vasi Karena Karena Kirtan Eta Pujari Karaila Thakure Shayana. Madhavendra Puri left the temple and sat down in the village marketplace, which was vacant. Sitting there, he began to chant. In the meantime, the temple priest laid the deity down to rest. Purport, although Madhavendra Puri was not interested in eating and sleeping, his interest in chanting the Mahamantra was as acute as if he were an aspiring transcendentalist rather than a Paramhamsa. This means that even in the Paramhamsa stage, one cannot give up chanting. Haridas Thakur and the Goswamis were all engaged in chanting a fixed number of rounds. Therefore, chanting on beads is very important for everyone. Even though one may become a Paramhamsa, this chanting can be executed anywhere, either inside or outside the temple. Madhavendra Puri even sat down in a vacant marketplace to perform his chanting, as stated by Srinivas Acharya in his prayers to the Goswamis, Namagana Natibhihi. A Paramhansa devotee is always engaged in chanting and rendering loving service to the Lord. Chanting the Lord's holy names and engaging in his service are identical. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 7.5.23, there are nine kinds of devotional service 
hearing Shravanam, chanting Kirtanam, remembering Vishnu Smaranam, serving Pada Sevanam, worshipping of the day, worship of the deity Archanam, praying Vandanam, carrying of carrying out orders, Dasyam, serving him as a friend, Sakyam, and sacrificing everything for the Lord, Atmanivedanam. Although each process appears distinct, when one is situated on the absolute platform, he can see that they're identical. For instance, hearing is as good as chanting and remembering is as good as <clears throat> chanting or hearing. Similarly, engaging in deity worship is as good as chanting, hearing or remembering. The devotee is expected to accept all nine processes of devotional service, but even if one only process even if only one process is properly executed, he can still attain the highest position of Paramahansa, that, that is Paramahansa, and go back to go back home, back to Godhead. Verse 126. Nicha Kritya Kari Pujari Karila Shayana Swapne Thakur Asi Balila Vachan. Finishing his daily duties, the priest went to take rest in dream. He saw the Gopina deity come to talk to him and he spoke as follows. Verse 1 to 7 Uttaha Pujari Kardwara Vimochan Kshira Eka Rakhiachi Sanyasi Karana. Oh, please, please get up and open the door of the temple. I have kept one pot of sweet rice for the Sanyasi Madhavendra Puri. Verse 1 to 8 Dharhara Anchale Raka Eka Kshira Haya Tumara. Janila Taha Amar Mayaya. This part of sweet rice is just behind my cloth curtain. Dhaka means covered. My cloth curtain, you did not see it because of my tricks. Dharar is cloth. Verse 1 to 9. Madhav Puri. Sanyasi Ache Hatete Vasina Tahake Ta Ek Shira Shigra Deha Lena. A Sanyasi named Madhavinda Puri is sitting in the vacant marketplace. Please take this pot of sweet rice from behind me and deliver it to him. Verse 130 Swapna Deki Pujari Uti Karila Vichar Snana Kari Kapat Khuli Mukat Mukta Kaila Dwar. Kapat means the door. Awaking from the dream, the priest immediately arose from the bed and thought it was wise to take a bath before entering the deity's room. He then opened the temple door. Verse 131. Dharar Anchal Tale Paila Saik Shira Sthana Leti Shira Lena Haila Bahira according to the deity's direction. The priest found the pot of sweet rice behind the cloth curtain. He removed the pot and mopped up the place where it had been kept. He then went out of the temple. Verse 132. Grame Gela Sai Kshira Lena Hatte Hatte Bule Madhav Purike China. Closing the door of the temple, he went to the village with a pot of sweet rice. He called out in every stall in search of Madhavendra Puri. Verse 133. Translation, holding the pot of sweet rice, the priest called, Will he whose name is Madhavendra Puri please come and take this pot? Gopinath has stolen this pot of sweet rice for you. Purport, the difference between the absolute truth and relative truth is explained here. Lord Gopinath has openly declared herein that he is the thief. He had stolen the pot of sweet rice and this was not kept a secret because his act of stealing is a source of great transcendental bliss. In the material world, theft is criminal, but in the spiritual world, the Lord stealing is a source of transcendental bliss. Mundane rascals who cannot understand the absolute nature of the personality of Godhead sometimes call Lord Shri Krishna immoral, but they do not know that his seemingly immoral activities, which are not kept secret, afford pleasure to the devotees. 
not understanding the transcendental behavior of the supreme personality of godhead these rascals slur his character and immediately fall into the category of miscreants that is rascals lowest among the men demons and those who knowledge is taken away by the illusory energy krishna explains in the bhagavad gita 7.15 namam dushkritino mudha prapadyante naradhamah mayaya bharita jnana jnana asuram bhavam bhavam ashrita those miscreants who are grossly foolish who are lowest among mankind whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons who do not surrender unto me verse 7.15 from bhagavad gita mundane rascals cannot understand that whatever krishna does being absolute in nature is all good this quality of the lord is explained in shrimad bhagavatam 10.33.29 one may consider certain acts of supremely powerful person to be immoral by mundane calculations but this is not actually the case for example the sun absorbs the water from the surface of the earth but it does not absorb water only from the sea it also absorbs water from the filthy sewers and ditches containing urine and other impure substances the sun is not polluted by absorbing such water rather the sun makes the filthy place pure if a devotee approaches the supreme personality of godhead for an immoral or improper purpose he nonetheless becomes purified the lord does not becomes infected in shrimad bhagavatam 10.29.15 it is stated that if one approaches the supreme lord even out of lust anger or fear kamam krodham or bhayam he is purified the gopis being young girls approach krishna because he was a beautiful young boy from the external point of view they approach the lord out of lust and the lord dances with them at midnight from the mundane point of view these activities may appear immoral because a married or unmarried young girl cannot leave home to mix with a young boy and dance with him although this is immoral from the mundane viewpoint the activities of the gopis are accepted as the highest form of worship because it was lord krishna whom they approached with lusty desires in the dead of night but these things cannot be understood by non devotees one must understand krishna in tattva that is in the truth one should use his common sense and consider that if simply by chanting krishna's holy name one is purified how then can the person krishna be immortal immortal Unfortunately mundane fools are accepted as education leaders and are offered exalted posts for teaching irre- irreligious principles to the general populace this is explained in shrimad bhagavatam 7.5.31 andha yathan dhair upani yamanah blind men are trying to lead other blind men due to the immature understanding of such rascals common men should not discuss krishna's pastimes with the gopis a non devotee should not even discuss his stealing sweet rice for his devotees it is warned that one should not even think about these things although krishna is the purest of the pure mundane people thinking of krishna's pastimes that appear immoral themselves become polluted shri chaitanya mahaprabhu therefore never publicly discussed krishna's dealings with the gopis he used to discuss these dealings only with the three confidential friends He never discussed Ras Leela publicly as the professional reciters do although they do not understand Krishna or the nature of the audience however Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu encouraged the public chanting of the holy name on a huge scale for as many hours as possible so we will continue our reading from verse number 134 next time Thank you for joining Hari Om Tat Sat Hare Krishna Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami ki jai Just to think that Kaviraj Goswami was almost 90 or 95 when he wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita is really humbling for us while reading this and then thank you to our Bhagwan Acharya who has given the purpose and made it even more interesting for all of us hari bol